Okay, we're gonna learn how to find the greatest common factor, also known as the GCF, of 24 and 60. So first a little bit on, on this whole world of greatest common factors. This is gonna help you um, simplify fractions. This is gonna help you factor later on. Um, it's kind of like a building block that you will learn, um, you'll use later. So first, um, what is the, a factor? So a factor is any number that could be bro that 24 can be broken down into in terms of multiplication. So as you're as I'm talking, I want you to think about the numbers 24 and 60, and I want you to think about what two numbers multiply to get to 24, and what two numbers multiply to get to 60. There's several answers here, so. Being really good at this is just a matter of you practicing knowing what the factors are. And knowing the factors is almost like the backwards of you knowing your multiplication tables or your time your times facts. So first, I'm going to show you two different ways on finding this. Here's the first way. First, I take 24 and I think about two numbers that multiply to get to 24. And because 24 is even, I thought about 2 and 12. And then I continue down the road. Um, 2 is a prime number, so I can't break him down into his factors because he's prime, meaning he's only going to break down into 1 and 2. But 12 is not, so I'm going to break down 12 into its factors. Now I could use whatever I want, 3 and 4, but here I chose 2 and 6. The reason why I chose 2 and 6 is because I... Um, I know it's even, and evens are even z for me, so I like to think about my, my doubles. And then again, 2 is a prime number, but 6 isn't, so I'm going to break down 6 into its factors, which there's only one choice here, it's 2 times 3. Or if you wrote 3 times 2, that's okay too. So now I like to make them all on the same level, and then so I'm going to um, do that. So then... Um, I brought them down all on the same level. So really here, what I'm doing is 24 is the same as 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. And you want to check your work here. So um, 2 times 2 is 4. And then 4 times 2 is uh, 8. And 8 times 3, yes, is 24. You want to just check to make sure that you're doing it right. So I'm going to follow the same method with my 60. And because 60 is 60, I thought about 6 and 10. So there's 10 times 6. And then I'm going to break down 10 into 2 and 5. And 6 into 2 and 3. Now 2, 5, and 3 are all um, prime numbers, so they can't be broken down anymore. So it looks like this tree is shorter. It, I mean, it's just how I broke it down. I could have used 2 times 30 in the very beginning, and that would have you know, made my tree a little bit looking different, so maybe you can try that in a little bit. And then I'm just going to rewrite 60. And 60 is 2 times 2 times 3 times 5. And I'm just going to check my work here. Uh, 2 times 2 is 4, and 4 times 3 is 12, and 12 times 5 is really 60. So I did not make any mistakes there. So I'm going to go back to this, def this, this word here that they're asking us to do. They want us to find the greatest common factor, right? Greatest means the biggest thing. Common means something that they have, they both have. Um, like if you, if you think about some of your friends, but maybe both of you, what, one of the things that you have in common is you're both in the same grade or you're both, um, you know, you both go to the same school or there's something in common that you guys share. So common in math terms is still the same thing. What do 24 and 60, what are their common? And then factors, here's all the factors that we broke everything down into, right? So now we're going to gonna start looking at the factors and seeing who they work with, right? So what do you notice between 24 and 60? Do you notice anything common? Yeah, I notice the twos too. And then they also have another set of twos. Now I'm not going to circle that third two in 24 right here because 60 doesn't have another two, so I can't do that. So I'm not going to circle it. 
Um, and then the last common factor that they have and share is a three. So the greatest common factor that they have is of 24 and 60 is 2 times 2 times 3, which is really just 12. Okay, so the, again, the greatest common factor is the biggest thing that we could take out of both of them. Now, see up here how we have 12? We could have taken a 12 out of that 60 as well, because 12 times 5 is 60, and if I would have known that in the very beginning, then I wouldn't have had to do all this um, kind of like tree diagram work. So this is one method. This is method one. Here's method two. Method two has you start the same exact way. You write the two numbers. And then here you write this little kind of like, I don't know, L looking thing. And what you want to think is, what number goes into both 24 and 60? And because they're both even, I chose the number two. Now what you write below <clears throat> are what's left over when you take out that 2. So when I take out a 2 from 24, I'm left with a 12. When I take out a 2 from 60, I'm left with a 30. And then I continue the same work. So now I'm not looking at 24 and 60. I've made my problem smaller, which is a really good tactic in math. So now I'm looking at 12 and 30. What is common in 12 and 30? What do they have? What factor do they both share? So again, they're both even, so I did a 2 again. And there's your leftover values of 6 and 15, because 2 times 6 is 12, and 2 times 15 is, is 30. And I'm going to see if I could do it one more time. Do you think, can you think of a factor of 6 and 15? I did 2. I thought of 3. So what's left over? 2 and 5. And because 2 and 5 are number 1 prime, that means the only common factor they'll have is 1, and number two, they don't share another common factor besides one, then that means I'm done. So do you see our greatest common factor that we have over here? Do you see it in my picture in method two? So yeah, it's along the side here. It's what we pulled out each layer. It's almost like a cake. So we pulled out a two, a two, and a three. And it just so happens that that's the same exact order that we wrote over here. That's a coincidence. I could have I could have pulled out a three in the very beginning, but I like my evens, like I said earlier. So now it's your turn. I want you to find the greatest common factor of 36 and 54 and see if which method you like better. You don't have to know both, but it is kind of neat that both of these methods are really pointing to the same thing. You're looking at what's common, and then you're taking out what's common, and you're multiplying them together to get the greatest common factor.